stand for the procession. Thank you.
Please be seated. Vice-Chancellor, High Sheriff of Cheshire, Lord Mayor of Chester, distinguished guests. A very warm welcome to all of you as we gather together in Chester's magnificent cathedral on this very special day. My name is Jill Reeve and I am Senior University Chaplain and Dean of Chapel. In addition to those of us gathered here in the cathedral, we're also joined by others online and we extend a really warm welcome to each one of you as well. In our graduation ceremonies this week, we are also conferring honorary degrees, acknowledging those who have made an important contribution to society from beyond the university. And we are delighted to be able to introduce you to one of our honorary graduates later in this ceremony. Gathered here in Chester Cathedral, it's worth noting the special relationship between the cathedral and the university that goes back to our roots as a pioneering and innovative teacher training college founded in 1839. Few teachers at that time had formal training and Chester College was the first purpose-built teacher training college of its kind in England. If you had joined as the first 10 students in 1840, your general studies would have included geometry, algebra and bookkeeping. And in your spare time, you would have helped to build a university chapel and even a steam engine. Back in 1839, the Dean and Chapter of this cathedral gifted the land that is now our Exton Park campus just down the road from here. The relationship between the cathedral and the university remains an important one to this day, and we are grateful to Dean Tim and the team for their ongoing support. Our university has changed immensely since those 1840s, but our mission statement continues to express our roots and our foundational values, founded in faith, creating community, serving society. Our multi-faith chaplaincy team now has the joy of supporting a vibrant, diverse and international community of staff and students. Each one of you has made your own unique contribution during your time with us, and we are thankful for each one of you. And so, as this ceremony begins, I would encourage you to put aside all distractions, including worries about whether that cap of yours is actually going to stay on your heads, and just simply enjoy this very well-deserved moment. As we begin, let us unite our hearts and our prayers for each one of you graduating today. May you use your unique gifts and talents well, always mindful of the needs of others and with a heart of care and compassion that is committed to a fairer and more just world. May you keep alive in you a spirit of inquiry and exploration with an openness to question and be questioned in the search for truth learning and new insights. May you find before you new possibilities and wider horizons and have the confidence to step out in faith with a sense of adventure, joy and hope. And always let integrity be your guide. And may God bless you today and in all that lies ahead. Amen.
Permis and Weekis in AO, I declare open this congregation for the presentation of degrees and awards. Good afternoon. I'm Professor Eunice Simmons, Vice-Chancellor at the University of Chester, and it is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to this wonderful cathedral, both physically and virtually, as we mark your individual and collective successes. As you've heard, you're now part of an institution that prides itself with a history of being based in this magnificent city for nearly 200 years. This sense of place, has been at the core of your time with us. You've become part of our university community, located in Chester and across our region, in university centres in Birkenhead, Warrington, Shrewsbury, and importantly this afternoon, Rees Heath. Today, we gather not only to acknowledge the completion of your academic journey, but to recognise the countless hours of hard work, dedication, and passion that have brought you to this moment. Your graduation is not just the culmination of your efforts, but a testament to your potential and the boundless opportunities that lie ahead. But success is not just about personal achievement, it's about the impact you make on the world and the lives you touch along the way. We celebrate your success, not just in achieving your degrees, of which you should be justly proud, but in developing so many skills, qualities, attributes and strengths as citizen students of the University of Chester. You're now each contributing to society as citizens of the world, a world that is uncertain and which faces many challenges, but one for which you are all well prepared to find your way and make your mark following your time at Chester. Adversity may be inevitable in your professional journey, but I know you will utilize the skills of resilience and problem solving that you've developed at Chester throughout your whole career. Every challenge is an opportunity for growth. Learn from your mistakes, adapt and keep pushing forward, always striving to do what is right, even when it's difficult. So this is your day, a day to recognize and remember. But before I take the opportunity to congratulate you in person, when you take your all-important walk across this stage, just a few examples of activities from the faculties you've studied in. As you reflect upon your journey, we're reminded of the beauty and complexity of the biological world and the delicate state it's currently in. Each one of you has had the privilege to delve deep into this world, exploring its intricacies, discovering its wonders. You've examined the tiny structures that make up life. In your studies, You've not only gained knowledge, but also cultivated the invaluable skill of critical thinking. You've learned to question, to analyze, and to adapt. Biological science is not merely a subject, it's a way of thinking, a lens through which we see the world. And as you embark on a new journey, you carry with you the power to dissect complex problems, to innovate, and to find solutions that make the world a better place. In today's world, where the challenges we face are more daunting than ever, the importance of biological science cannot be overstated. I speak as a graduate of biological sciences myself some 40 years ago. Climate change, biodiversity loss, emerging diseases, and countless other issues require the expertise and dedication of biologists. We have a responsibility to utilize our knowledge and skills for the betterment of society, for the conservation of our planet, and for the health and well-being of future generations. You've been part of a community of people that have been carrying out vital research, seeking solutions to some of these challenges. It's included working on endangered speech, species, such as the Granada dove, understanding the life history traits of this key bird species through genetic techniques, identifying the genetic basis of drug resistance in liver fluke, 
using machine learning to determine the taxonomic identification of archaeological fish remains, or social network analysis to understand factors that affect parental decisions. The department has also been running public outreach events, with the first taking place in the summer at Chumley Castle and Gardens. The event was a two-day bio-blitz aimed at primary school children, where they could learn from both academics and students about insects and birds, go pond dipping, make their own animal masks in the crafting tent. This event was a great success, and the department was back at Chumley last weekend supporting their autumn festival, and were also invited to be part of the Chester Zoo Wildlife Connections Festival in September. Over 4,000 people attended this event and were able to hear all about the department's work from academics and students highlighting the Hedgehog Friendly Campus campaign, for example. We thank the students who took time out of their weekends to help highlight all the great work we do in this area. And a research example, Dr. Christina Stanley and Professor Tessa Smith have recently received a £500,000 grant from the Leverhulme Trust. The project is looking into monitoring bats using nanoelectronics and novel endocrine methods to monitor their well-being. Two of our recent graduates are now part of this project, so continuing their educational journey with us, which is great. Dr. Nick Fleming also received a grant from Natural England using environmental DNA to identify marine invasive non-native species using plastic litter as vectors in port environments. Doctors Nicola Beasley, Rachel Franker, and Johnny Kiffin have all recently completed their PG cert in higher education. They've gained their fellowship of the Higher Education Academy, which is a great achievement, given their other responsibilities and commitments. It ensures we can continue to deliver quality teaching and learning to our students. Well done to all those colleagues. And the graduates here today from University Centre Rees Heath have benefited from the opportunity to advance their practical skills alongside development of theoretical knowledge and understanding. Many students have benefited from UK and international field trips to further enhance knowledge and awareness, including trips in the past academic year to Old Pater Conservatory in Kenya. Here, students had the opportunity to undertake game counts, daytime and nighttime safari drives, camera trapping, transects, behavioral observations, and support the management of the captive wildlife, such as black and white rhino and chimpanzees. They also went on horseback patrols, undertook tracing, tracking, and training activity, and supported a number of community engagement projects. These are unforgettable experiences, which will have developed you personally, professionally, and academically. And some of you in front of me today are now managers and operators of your own farms, some having recently secured new tenancies, so congratulations to you. Others have secured positions as assistant farm managers and dairy herd managers. And today, we are delighted to have the first cohort of veterinary nurses graduating with both their BSc Honours Degree and their status as registered vet nurses with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. There are many successful stories amongst this group, with the vast majority already in employment within veterinary practices. Students from our equine science degree have gained internships within equine feed companies supporting research and development in equine nutrition. And many of our zoo management students have secured positions at a whole range of zoos, including Chester, but also Welsh Mountain Zoo, Amazona Zoo, Blackpool Zoo, and Linton Zoo. Others have started their careers in education as instructors or lecturers in further education colleges. Many of our canine graduates are putting their degree straight into practice through the formation of their own businesses, supporting dog owners with behavioral training, for example. So well done, and congratulations to each one of you. We hope you're as proud of your achievements as we are <coughs> proud of you. And I want to remind you of a famous quote by the great biologist Charles Darwin. It is not the strongest of species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. As you move forward, be responsive to change. Be agents of change and make the world a better place through the power of your actions. Now look around you at your cohort. See how many people from different backgrounds have flourished at this significant point in history. Keep this picture in your mind so you can recall your achievements in the future. And I'd like to now conclude just with some heartfelt thank yous 
to the academics who've created such interesting courses and who've taught and supported you throughout your studies, to the professional services staff who've looked after you in so many ways, some of which you may not even be aware of, to our governors who help guide this institution, to everyone who's made this ceremony such an occasion for you, including the Dean and Chapter of this great cathedral for hosting us. And to the people closest to you, many here today or watching online, who've supported you during your studies. But mostly to those of you graduating today for choosing the university in the first place. Today in this wonderful setting, with the splendor and the fanfares, we wanted to give you a day you will remember forever. You are why this university exists, and I look forward to shaking your hands individually. You all deserve a huge round of applause. Well done. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of Senate, I present to you these graduates for admission to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit these graduates to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy of the University of Chester. For a programme of study entitled The Application of Genetic Techniques to Conservation of the Critically Endangered Grenada Dove, Leptotilia welsi, Dr. Catherine Mary Peters. For a programme of study entitled The Social System, Behaviour and Communication of the Golden Monkey, Cercopithecus Mitis Candy, Dr. Susan Marion Wiper. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of Senate, I present to you these graduates for admission to the degree of Master of Science in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit these graduates to the degree of Master of Science of the University of Chester. Kripke Pathak Chapogain. <laughs> Roger James Williams. Diksha Dital. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, in the name of Senate, I present to you this graduate for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Arts in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit this graduate to the degree of Bachelor of Arts at the University of Chester. Joshua Fuller. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of Senate, I present to you these graduates for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Science in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit these graduates to the degree of Bachelor of Science of the University of Chester. Jaden Alcock. <laughs> Lauren Anderson. Luke Antill. Lillian Aroni. Alice Balde. Catherine Bartrup. Samuel Fred Bates. Charlotte Borden.
Chloe Beardmore. Charlotte Beck. Gina Burney. Daniel Allen Bradley. Emily Bressett. Nicole Bundred. Megan Burnett. Leah Marie Kane. Emily Rose Chapman. Callum Charlesworth. Sophie Elizabeth Clayton. Jacob Collier. Logan Colquitt. Molly Dalton. Charlie Allen Daniels. Abby David. Olivia Brendan Dobson. Ellie Doyle. Madeleine Adara Draper. Madeleine Dunn. Connor Andrew Eagle. And the recipient of the F.W. Hooper Prize, Ezra Algamo. Abby Elliott Smith. Daniel Ferreira. Jack Arnold Fishwick. Vanessa Louise Forshaw. Jacinta Healy. Chelsea G. Rachel Glover. Jack Goodridge. Zachary Gorst. Chloe Green. Cora Greenoff. <laughs> Alex James Greenwood. Rosie Gieber. Maria Hall. Victoria Hall. Leah Hamer. Caris Hamilton. Megan Alice Hardy. Emma Hassan. Andrew Hatton. James Heenigan.
Alicia Hogan. <laughs> Emily Holt. <laughs> Connor Hopewell. <laughs> Jake Daniel Hopwood. Fran Humble. Charlotte Louise Hume. Amber Hunt. Tasmin Steed Yucabellis. Isha Iqbal. Charlotte Georgina Ireland. Georgia Louise Jackson Oxley. Charlotte Alicia Dewsbury. May Joachim. Anwin Jones. Maria B. Jones. Kyle Kemp. Danielle Jacqueline Koenig. Katrina Yusufine Nippenberg. Andrea Lane. Freya Lawler. Millie Marshall say. Holly McAdam. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca McDonald. <laughs> Bethany Rose McLachlan. Grace McLaughlin. Charlie McRory. Lewis Meehan. Okay. Amber Mengel. <laughs> Sophia Mataxa. Holly Moore. Christina Moreland. Dylan Morley. Brandon Morris. Emily Morris. Chloe Mosley. Rachel Myers. Joseph Nunyith. <laughs> Celine Palmer. <laughs> Shriya Brahme Parane Ruba Singham. <laughs> David Pink. Joshua Pollard. Yasmin Louvain Puva. Fionn Proctor.
Al Ralston. Eleanor Rees. Elizabeth Hannah Richardson. Ellie Robinson. Anna Louise Rosal. Freya Solway. Shanna Scarf. Emily Seddon. Maisie Shea. June McCauley Smallwood. Caitlin Maria Smithers. Heather Stovold. Christy May Tallock. Martine Bjorke Tande. Samantha Taylor. Rebecca Eve Thompson. Rowan Tracy. Elizabeth Tupper. Daniela Turbulento. Lauren Lee Vanderwell. Maisie Vinnie. Seb Walker. <laughs> Bethany Ward. Jacob Watson. Abby Webster. Catherine Whitfield. Lachlan Wilkinson Wright. Chloe Williams. Ethan Williams. Kim Louise Williams. Lauren Amber Willoughby. Emmy Wood. Aisha Sheik. Vice Chancellor. In the name of Senate, I present to you this graduand for the award of Diploma of Higher Education of this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I present to this graduand the award of Diploma of Higher Education of the University of Chester. Rebecca Bennett. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, I present to you these graduands for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Science in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit these graduands to the degree of Bachelor of Science at the University of Chester. Rachel Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Calliope Angelakopoulos.
Dale Blackburn. Kitty Bota. Zara Alice Bowden. Shauna Bridget. Alexandra Bryson. Caitlin Amber Buckley. Connor Butler. Jake Clements. Jade Conroy. Bethany Davis. Eleanor Grace Dobson. Nathan Domogalski. Jessica Hope Doan. James Robert Doran. Lauren Dowardswell. Amy Elizabeth Dyke. Nina Fitzpatrick. Stephanie Jane Fraser. Woo! Molly French. Woo! Rosanna Frith. Woo! Hannah Geeson. Woo! Amy Golding. Emily Louise Graham. Woo! Liam Harrington. Woo! Brittany Herman. Woo! Jessica Hodge. Woo! Jamie Lee Hodgson. Taryn Chrissy Ann Hopper. Woo! Tom Elwyn Jelfs. Woo! Bella Lynn Jewis. Woo! Ella Jones. Woo! Lauren Jones. Malgoshata Kulig. <laughs> Neve Bernadette Larkin. <laughs> Beth Alexandra Latham. <laughs> David Lawley. <laughs> Cora McMichael. Callum Martin. <laughs> Hannah Maudsley. <laughs> Rebecca Millington. <laughs> Chloe Ann Mitchell. <laughs> Niall Murphy. Susan Noble. Woo! 
Crystal Parry. Richard Pearson. Jody Pell. Jody Pennicott. Katie Powell. Sophie Riley. Hannah Roberts. Lucy Page Roberts. Chloe Catherine Roberts Corbett. Ellen Sharp. Oscar Shaw. Julia Mary Shimwell. Samuel Joshua Surety. Hannah Sinclair. Julia Sinclair. Julie Ann Stanford. Holly Victoria Stockton. Jade Louise Stubbs. Rosie Stubbs. Emily Sutton. Natalia Shushuruba. Samuel Taylor. Hanny Marie Thwaite. Amalia Tome Blanco. Ryan Whitmarsh. <laughs> Rihanna May Williamson. <laughs> Jacob Wilmot. <laughs> Andrew Woodhead. Louis Wellsby. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, I present to you these graduands for the award of Foundation Degree in Sciences of this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I present to these graduands the award of Foundation Degree in Sciences of the University of Chester. Chloe Louise Archer. Georgia Grace Barnes. Madeline Emily Rose Bates. Olivia Zoe Bennett. Alicia Booth. Carter Bryan. Claire Butterworth. Isla Callender. Jody Cheatham.
Nelson Christian. Victoria Cole. Laura Kate Cornish. Casey Crispin. Daniel Philip Davies. Keris Davies. Rebecca Dawson. Morgan Drinkwater. Abby Louise Duncan. Kelsey Ebrell. Holly Eccleston. Clary May Farrington. Dominic Rowan Russell Grover. Charlie Hall. Lucy Emma Hanko. Leanne Harrison. Oliver Thomas Huff. Jack Haywood. Lydia Marie Higginson. Paige Hill. Elizabeth Hollins. George Howard Elliott. William Howard Elliott. Jack Hoyland. Steph Hubble. Kerry Ann Jones. Imogen Jones. Summer Lackin. <laughs> Heather Lee. <laughs> Meredith Lowe. <laughs> Megan Marsh. <laughs> Saffron Six, Rosie Marshall Brunel. Neve Mackay. <laughs> Chloe Nadin. <laughs> Ella Ruby D. O'Donnell. <laughs> Amber Oliver. Frankie Seaborn. Samuel Sheriff. Rachel Spence. Eloise Victoria Taylor. Abigail Thompson. Emma Thompson.
Katie Thompson. Charlotte Warwick. Keely Waters. Sally Whiteley. Jack Wilkinson. Georgina Worsley. Vice Chancellor, I make application to you to present the degrees and awards listed to those candidates at the University of Chester who have not been presented in person but whose names appear in the programme and who have indicated that they wish their degrees to be presented in their absence. I certify that they are worthy to receive those degrees and awards and I stand as proxy for them. I admit them to those degrees and present those awards and I accept you as proxy. I now call upon the public orator to present the honorary graduate Francis Ball for admission to his degree. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to present Geoffrey Francis Maitland Ball for admission to the degree of Honorary Doctor of Letters. Francis's connection with the University of Chester came about because on stepping down as Managing Director of Costco in 2006, he agreed to serve on our University Council. Francis was appointed as Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee a role which he said former colleagues found it very difficult to believe he was taking on. Francis had been noted throughout his business career for persistently practicing irrational optimism by his own admission. Nevertheless, irrational optimist or not, Francis put his lifetime of business knowledge to good work in our university community for nine years, working with both our current vice chancellor and her predecessor, Professor Tim Wheeler. During this time, Francis put forward the view that the well-being of students and of staff must be a priority. Indeed, human well-being was to uh, prove a recurring theme for Francis when he became, somewhat accidentally really, the founder of a food-growing charity in Ellesmere Port. His letter to the Lord Lieutenant of Cheshire in 2011 had actually said precisely nothing about establishing a new social enterprise. Rather, it had been to request a place for his narrowboat in the Queen's Jubilee pageant on the River Thames. The Lord Lieutenant, however, delighted to spot a retired businessman with time on his hands, replied by inviting him to take on three acres of land in Cheshire, being gifted by the Duke of Westminster for community food production. Francis took one look and realised that the land was too small and in the wrong place. However, the idea sparked in him and a friend the vision for growing food commercially and simultaneously offering a therapeutic environment for the long-term unemployed in the area. What emerged was called Bridge, Wellness, Bridge Community Wellness Gardens. And for this work, he was awarded an MBE in 2020. In conversation with Francis, I was struck by how often he used the word fascinating. I felt this reflected not just a sharp 
and inquisitive mind, but also an energy and enthusiasm for learning, which seems to have been the driving force of his career. Francis has a bold imagination, bold enough to take him out to Russia in the late 1980s, looking for business opportunities as the country was going through perestroika, bold enough to lead an enterprise as large as Costco, bold enough to start a small commercial horticultural charity from scratch. But Francis also has a tremendous ability to acknowledge failure, to reflect on it and put the learning to good use. Talking to me, he described the original business plan for Bridge Community Wellness Gardens as flawed. He had seriously underestimated how much support those who um, have been unemployed for a long time would need to participate in what was essentially commercial agriculture. But rather than closing it down, Francis embarked on a major fundraising drive, bringing in around 1.2 million pounds. Demanding though this surely was, his overriding emotion was not his exhaustion, but his joy at enabling people to discover themselves again as assets to their community. And of course, his efforts also brought 1.2 million pounds into the Ellesmere Port economy, where it created dozens of support roles for local people over many years. So, Francis, we congratulate you today on being conferred an honorary degree from the University of Chester. We thank you for all you have given to so many local communities, to this city, to the town of Ellesmere Port, and to our own university. All these communities have benefited so much from your resilience and commitment, from your creative imagination, and from your great compassion. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the Senate and of the Council, it is with very great pleasure that I present to you Geoffrey Francis Maitland Ball for admission to the degree of Honorary Director of Letters, Honoris Causa in this university. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa of the University of Chester. It gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Ball to address the congregation. Vice-Chancellor, my lords, ladies, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, congratulations to you graduates, congratulations to your wonderful supporting families and friends, and sincere congratulations to the fantastic staff at the University of Chester. This day belongs to all of you. Give yourselves a big round of applause. That's just in case you hadn't done enough clapping already. <laughs> Fellow graduates, when I was at your stage in life, 22 years old, I failed my degree in aeronautical engineering at Imperial College London. I was summarily bumped out of my apprenticeship. I was out of work. I was in debt. And by the way, I had fallen out with my parents 
because they disapproved of the girl that I was in love with, so I couldn't go home. I got a job working in pubs during the day. I got a second job working in a laundry in the evenings, and a third job doing a 12-hour night shift in a bakery on Friday nights, and so I quite quickly paid off my debts. And I'm happy to tell you that my girlfriend's wonderful parents took me in, so I wasn't on the streets. Incidentally, we married, and that was 55 years ago. Thank you, Valerie, for seeing something in me all those years ago. <laughs> when my career in aeronautical engineering, so carefully planned, went belly up, I thought, what in heaven's name am I going to do now? What, what, am, I, what am I good at? Well, I was reasonably good at maths, and I was hardworking, and I was a reasonably good communicator, so I decided to give retail a go. And in those days, Marks and Spencer was recognized as having the best management training uh, courses in the UK, so I joined the MS Management Training Scheme in 1972. I thought if I could get five successful years under my belt with M&S, that might go some way to uh, offsetting the ignominy of having failed my degree. I actually stayed for 13 years because they kept giving me something more interesting to do every year. My M&S training and experience enabled me to apply for my first board appointment uh, in 1985 and we came up here to Chester and I got a job as the trading director at Littlewoods in Liverpool. And by the time I was 42, I had been managing director of a business in the UK employing 10,000 people, and I was now in Russia. The Soviet Union had just broken up and the Russians were, in theory, keen to uh, attract inward investment into St. Petersburg. But I couldn't get anything done in St. Petersburg without the written permission of the uh, personal assistant to the mayor of the city. He was an ex-KGB guy called Vladimir Putin. Yes, I'm afraid it was the same Putin whose name we barely dare mention these days. Anyway, we managed to get a good business going. We created lots of jobs for unemployed people. We created a good, steady supply of contemporary clothing and food for the local communities. By the time I was 62, I was back in the UK. I was chairman of the Federation of Wholesale Distributors in the UK, and I was helping a number of smaller businesses, either as chairman or non-executive director, to, to make their to, to fulfill their potential. Thinking, incidentally, I'm still involved in a couple of those businesses today. Thinking about today in the context of my working life, I came to three conclusions which I would like to recommend to you. First, I urge you to be open to the unexpected opportunities. You may have a clear vision of how you intend your life to go, or you may have absolutely no idea. I think I can see one or two slightly nervous looks around. It doesn't matter, so long as you are open to new opportunities. New experiences are exciting, and you never know where they might lead. Second, be kind to your colleagues and Set your stall out to be known for your integrity. If you are straight with people, you will make sound and lasting relationships. And incidentally, you're more likely to sleep well at night as well. And third, above all, try to leave every place a little better for you having been there. Remember that during our time here at the University of Chester, we have been encouraged to see ourselves as citizen students, learning to contribute to the societies in which we will live and work. I just want you to know that my most worthwhile experiences 
have been when I've been given the opportunity to help others. There's no warmer feeling, no, no greater reward than being thanked for having helped somebody out. And I, I'm sure most of you have already experienced this. So I encourage us all to go out into our worlds now thinking of ourselves as University of Chester citizen graduates. Leave every place a little better for us having been there. If you forget everything else that I have just said, please remember this. Let's leave every place a little better for us having been there. Thank you and congratulations. I now invite Maisie Vinnie, graduate of the class of 2023, to address the congregation. Hello. Firstly, could we please put our hands together for the class of 2023? <laughs> My name is Maisie Vinnie, and I'm incredibly proud to have graduated from the University of Chester today alongside my fellow graduates. It has been an amazing journey that has led me to this moment talking to all of you today. I know it's only me standing between you and the after party, so I'll keep this short and sweet. You might wonder why I'm now going to talk about snails, but I studied biology and spent several months writing about them for my dissertation. Snails are known to be slow but progress isn't always about how fast you travel. It's about the journey you take. To get to this moment today, each of us has been on our own unique journey, had our own challenges and taken our own opportunities. Today, we celebrate what we have achieved and the people who helped us get here. Our amazing lecturers and support staff, our friends and our families. I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank my mum, dad, and boyfriend, Ed, who are here celebrating with me today. Thank you for always being there for me and inspiring me to achieve my goals. You mean the world to me. <laughs> we will all remember this day forever. Whether you studied at Chester or Rees Heath, the University of Chester will be on our CVs for life. It is now part of us, part of our DNA. But graduation is not the end, it's just the beginning. So let's be proud of how far we have come and believe in how far we can go next. I will look back at our time as students here with fond memories. In fact, I've loved my time here as a student so much that I've decided to stay on. I now work as a member of staff at the University of Chester but I am proud to be part of a team that encourages and supports the next generation of students to join our university and reach their full potential. Thank you for listening and congratulations everyone graduating today. Thank you, Maisie, and I promise you only one more speech before the after party. Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Helen Galbraith, and I am Senior Pro Vice-Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer at the University of Chester. As your graduation ceremony draws to a close, we hope this day has been memorable for you and for those who have supported you throughout your studies. I want to add my congratulations to all of you here this is a special day that you will always remember and you should be very proud of yourselves. So what next? Well, I hope the first thing you do is to remember to keep in touch. Please make sure to start following at Chester Alumni on social media because today you celebrate becoming part of a community that is over 100,000 strong, living and working in 135 countries. 
our alumni relations team is here to keep you connected to your university. This is not the end, but just the beginning. Please make sure to visit them in the marquee to collect your alumni gift bag. This week, we are launching our Chester Worldwide campaign. We want photos of you and your alumni bag from all corners of the world. The benefits of staying connected are many because within this community could be your next employer, mentor, or client. The team will keep in touch, sharing all the latest news from the university and your alumni community via Graduate Shoutout, the monthly e-news for recent graduates. We also want to hear from you and how you're progressing through life. So please scan the QR code in your program or chat to our alumni relations team to ensure you're signed up to our super alumni community. Whether this has been your first degree, apprenticeship, full-time, part-time, undergraduate or postgraduate, our careers and employability team is here to support you with your next step. Perhaps you wish to set up your own business or you're looking for guidance on a certain industry. Perhaps you want to work abroad or you would like to consider a graduate trainee scheme. Whatever you're thinking, remember that we have an expert careers and employability team who are still available to you now as graduates in what is such an important time in your career. We are not the only ones interested in how you thrive in your career ambitions. In just over a year, you will be contacted by our partners to complete a graduate outcomes survey. Please can I ask you to ensure you do complete it it helps us to tell a story about our university and how it supports you into good careers. Your voice makes a real difference in ensuring our reputation is strong for you in the future. Information on how to engage with our careers and employability team, along with details of the Graduate Outcomes Survey, are all in your alumni bag. Now, I want to go briefly off script, as this is our last graduation ceremony of the week. This is our 12th graduation ceremony of the week, and we have had a wonderful week celebrating with you all. And I'm sure it's clear to you, as you've had such a special day, how much work has gone in in the weeks and months leading up to this ceremony and throughout this week as well uh, by our staff to ensure that this is a really special day for you. There are hundreds of staff who have made these ceremonies a success, and I'd just briefly like to mention two of them in particular. The first one is our head porter at Warrington, Stephen Bird. Uh, so when he's not our head porter at Warrington, Stephen is our chief esquire Bedell, uh, and he carries this beautiful ceremonial mace up and down the aisle for us and takes great care doing it. And he has done that over 250 times. And today he will be carrying that mace down the aisle for the very last time as he retires from the university this month. So please, could you join me in saying a huge thank you to Steve. <laughs> And next, there is one colleague without whom these ceremonies may not happen at all, and that is our awards and ceremonies coordinator, Debbie Nunes. Debbie has hardly left the cathedral this week, and she is tremendously dedicated to her, to her role. And really, without her, these ceremonies would not be such a special day as they have been for you. So, um, Debbie, we are going to embarrass you briefly as we have some flowers for you. Please, could you come and accept them? And can we say a huge thank you to Debbie? <laughs> Thank you, thank you everyone. So finally, for those of us here, I do look forward to seeing you in the marquee on the Cathedral Green to celebrate. To those watching around the world, thank you so much for sharing our graduates' achievements. And to you, our newest alumni, as you embark on your professional careers, I want you to remember the significance of the skills and knowledge you have acquired at the University of Chester. These are not just tools for employment, they are instruments for change, for progress, and for making a positive impact on societies across the world. The future is yours. Own it well. Congratulations once again. You will always be part of the University of Chester 
and the university will always be a part of you. Thank you. I declare closed this congregation for the presentation of degrees and awards. Salva sit universitas nostra, quod procantes consagamus.